rails come, rails go. And sometimes those rails are converted into trails. These trails get utilized for all types of recreation and relaxation. With over 1,600 trails across the nation, you won't need to look far to find one near you. Oh look, a trail! 100 feet or 100 miles, it doesn't matter how far you go, just that you get out and go. The Bedford Narrow Gauge Rail Trail is a 3.1 mile long trail which travels from the center of Bedford to Bellerica, Massachusetts. So parking for this trail is very convenient. At the trailhead, right across the road, you'll find public parking. Half the lot is VFW and half is public parking. You'll also spot the Minuteman Bikeway, which is one of the Rail Trail Conservancy's Hall of Fame trails. Also at the beginning of this trail, on the right side is a park with public parking. Though since it's winter right now, it wasn't terribly clear, but the lot behind us was perfectly clear. So there's no shortage for parking. As you begin down in Bedford, you'll notice there's actually still some old track embedded and an old push car. This is so cool, Aries. I love that the old rail is still here. <laughs> so this line was actually the first commonly used two foot narrow gauge in the US. And for anybody who's looking for additional trails, this is a perfect spot because as mentioned before, behind us is the Minuteman Bikeway, which is, uh, I think is about a 10 mile trail. And then going westward is the Reformatory Branch Trail, which is about four and a half miles. The trail we're on currently is just about three miles long. So there's plenty of hiking, biking, whatever you wanna do around here. A quarter of a mile from the start, you come to Great Road. After making sure no cars were coming, we crossed over and were on our way. Three tenths of a mile later, you'll come up on Hillside Avenue. Looks clear both ways, ready to cross? Yes, she is. Cross over, go up a little ways and spot the gates and continue along the way. Hey, hey Aries. Hey, go over there. That looks like it could be old foundation rock, which would have been trucked in, or should I say trained in, however you say that properly, I don't know, brought in by train <laughs> and put down to make the base for the bed. Aries and I are now getting to Springs Road, which is, I believe, the third road crossing on this trail. Total, I understand there are four but so far none of them have been bad. One thing I will note, on a lot of online reviews for this trail, I noticed people complained about the fences or the gates along making them out like they're huge gates with no room to get around. I don't mean to call anybody out, but I haven't noticed that specifically. I mean, yes, there are gates, as you can see right here, and there's plenty of room to get by. I'd say there's a good five or six feet to get around them. Uh, some of them have a little less, maybe four feet, but still, that doesn't seem too bad to me. After crossing Pine Hill Road, we continued on our way. Seems to me the worst thing with those gates is that you might have to slow down if you're on a bicycle, but since they're at road crossings, it's a good idea to slow down anyway. Continuing along, Aries and I traveled another four tenths of a mile before coming up on a large blue water tower next to the trail. What do you see there, girl? Oh, it's a big old stone retaining wall. Oh, it's a squirrel. You're funny. Come on, girl. What do we have here? York Conservation Area. We have a sign over here. So at just over one mile, according to that marker, 1.1 miles, you'll come to an intersection where there are some more public trails. That also means we are one third of the way done with this hike. What do you think about that girl? Hey, she loves it. Hey Aries, check it out. There is the old 
rectangle style, sometimes you see square style fencing that is very common for railroad right of ways. Back in the former days, that there meant do not cross over or else you might get run over by a train. Common day, you see you have this sort of diagonal crossed wire. Easier to climb that one, I would say. More footholds and finger holds than the big open. Eh, then again, could crawl through that one. People, you gotta electrify your fences. Aries, look, another conservation area. Yeah, even more trails. Hey, Aries, thanks for pointing that out, love. But we're going on this trail for now. Oh. So uh, I've noticed that this trail has not been kept clean of the snow. So that gives awesome potential for snowshoeing and cross country skiing or ski during with this little girl. You know, when you cross country ski and have a husky or two in front of you kind of assisting you along. I think that will be my next hobby. What do you think? Should I do it? And Aries, the Siberian Husky, showing us another trail system. Maybe part of the other ones we spotted. That one has a yellow blaze on it. So there's no lack of options on this little trail here for alternate trail routes to take. Immediately before the two mile mark, you'll spot Fawn Lake. So at Sweetwater Avenue, you will get to the conservation area for Fawn Lake. There's a large parking area here, and even though it's not plowed currently, it's still, I mean, it's flat and looks like you can just pull right in. Come on, girl. Look both ways. Little girl. Then we cross right over and continue on the trail. After briefly paralleling Sherman Lane, the trail enters a more wooded area. Something else I've noticed along this trail is that there are fire hydrants and manholes along the way for like the public works water. And I've realized that along a handful of old rail trails that I've hiked, they've converted sections of them to be like public works areas. I guess it's convenient. You already have a big long flat area that goes from town to town. Quickest route. Despite the snow pounding down on us, we continued on our way. Lead the way, little girl. It looks like we're coming to a bridge of some type up here. I see four concrete piers, pillars, abutments, whatever you want to call them. Maybe it's just a retaining wall, but let's go check it out. What do you think, girl? Want to check it out? Yes, she does. Looks like maybe they're just locations for culverts going under. So you'll notice immediately after this last gate we cross that the trail becomes less maintained. I'm not sure if we may have crossed over into another town or not. There was a big stone wall back there. But as you can see, the trail continues. So let's go find the end. As the trail continued, it got narrower and was soon lined by fences on both sides. Alright, now we've arrived at Springs Road for the second time, which according to the maps that I found is the official end of this trail. You can see right across the street from this part of the trail, uh, the old rail line has been converted into a road, but it is a residence only road, so this here is definitely the end of the trail. But at three miles long, with direct access to numerous other trails, whether it's in conservation lands or the two other rail trails down at the other end, I would say that the Bedford Narrow Gauge Rail Trail is great to get out, do a little hiking, walking, running. Summertime, you could do some biking, maybe do a little snowshoeing or cross country skiing, or maybe even ski touring with the little girl. Oh, when she's not too busy finding leaves to chase. <laughs> But it's just a great trail to get out and get a little exercise. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Rail Trails of America. To keep up to date, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash railtrailsofamerica, and subscribe to us on YouTube. That one is under youtube.com slash IMRfilms. That's the studio which produces Rail Trails of America. Thanks and happy trails.